We went to uh, the glacier, uh, the Collins Glacier, which is nearby, where there's a lot of uh, research being done. And we arrived on the Zodiac boat, and I saw the um, big cascades of water. I had a bit of a, an emotional moment there, because uh, I felt really confronted, not with a notion of climate change that is somehow deferred into the future. It's something that you have a massive glacier melting in front of your eyes, so uh, that was a big change. Uh, the title of this project is called Antarctic Cities and the Global Commons, Rethinking the Gateways. It's an Australia Research Council linkage project that runs from 2017 to 2020. And it's a big, a huge project involving five cities in three countries. Definitely in, uh, well, in the two cities that I've, I've had most to do with myself, I think there's a lot of uh, kind of positive feeling and, and a sense of, of wanting to be more than just a, a point of departure and arrival for people going to and from the Antarctic region, that the kind of key term of our project around custodianship and sort of a, a notion of taking care of the Antarctic is really important to them yeah. and they feel a, a, a particular connection which for those of us in more remote cities like Sydney don't necessarily feel, even though we're aware of the critical role the Antarctic plays in mm -hmm. global issues like climate change. The project has uh, two very important outcomes that we set out at the very beginning. One is an online series game and the other one is the formation of an Antarctic Youth Coalition. Uh, it was a process of selection, uh, competitive selection, and these were five people. There were four uh, young women and one young man uh, that came with us uh, as representatives. This experience in Antarctica has been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, it's not my first time in Antarctica, but each time is so different, whether it's the wildlife we've seen, the weather, the beautiful landscapes, but most importantly, it's the people that make it really spectacular. It's difficult to describe what I feel from the moment I looked at the window of the plane. Que terminábamos de cruzar el Drake y aparecían los glaciares eh, es una sensación indescriptible. Coming together to form the coalition is important because we cannot wait around for adults to make decisions for us. We need to come together as a youth and um, kind of make an army for the protection of our continent, of our wide continent. La red de jóvenes eh, es importante para mantener a la Antártica no solo en mantenerla viva acá, sino para que el mundo conozca que este lugar es muy importante, que está sufriendo eh, daños por el calentamiento global. I think the the cool thing is that there's an infinite possibility of futures for Antarctica and those futures are ultimately decided by us. There's no one here that can determine the future of Antarctica. Antarctica is uninhabited by people, essentially. But us in our own cities can decide the future by how we act in our everyday lives. We were in Antarctica for a week yeah. at the Julio Scudero Research Station. It's a station run by the Chilean Antarctic Institute since 1995. It's in, uh, in the tip of King George Island, which is one of the South Shetland Islands in the very tip of the peninsula. So we worked with Russian glaciologists, Chilean soil scientists, uh, Korean scientists, and looking at the spectrum of research that's been done in that area. And the third part was to work on the outline of the mission, vision, and strategic objectives of launching an Antarctic Youth Coalition, which was the big purpose of that trip. Uh, so we came out with uh, invigorated and inspired uh, of working together. There's, there's been a lot of media coverage about um, what is uh, actually the first coalition of this sort. 
I think this project was very ambitious because it tried to do a lot of things. One is to develop tools for the city councils to adopt in ways of understanding and measuring their connection to the Antarctic and, and maybe to shape how they build their urban futures in relation to the Antarctic. So we did a few surveys as well as uh, attempted to build a, an index and run some sustainability profiles for uh, some of the cities. So the game was uh, one part, as Juan's already mentioned, it's one part of what the project was looking to do, uh, looking to develop. And uh, it has a sort of interesting role because on the one hand it was designed to function as something like a research method, something similar to a survey or an interview that we would use to actually get uh, some research data for the project, looking at the kinds of choices, for instance, people might make within the game about particular decisions or, or challenges, and use that data as something we would write up in a, in a conventional kind of uh, sort of research context. It, it basically plays out as a simulation. We start at the present day and watch as time elapses and there's various activities you do as a player and what you're, you're trying to do is design a set of policies that provide the best sort of platform for addressing climate change. So in that sort of quite basic sense it's about the future and about different alternative futures. The name of the game is supposed to imply you know a, a fairly basic idea of kind of futures that are also open. The project uh, has a range of different partners. First, university partners. So the most important is the University of Tasmania, also the Univers University of Canterbury and the University of Magallanes, but also industry and government partners. Uh, most importantly, Hobart City Council, the Department of St State Growth, Tasmanian Department of State Growth, as well as uh, the Chilean Antarctic Institute and the Antarctic Office in Christchurch. Yeah, well, we've had some fantastic feedback, both from participants in workshops and from other members, from other researchers, from people in the public or people interested in the project. So at the moment, we have a very long shopping list of things that we want to do to, to try to complete the game this year. We last year were successful, I think, in, in getting to the point of a prototype, a, a sort of playable game. But I think with the feedback we have now, uh, the sort of agenda for, for 2020 is to complete the game within the kind of original intent that, that we had for it and uh, to, to try to boost you know, the, the sort of availability and use of the game, particularly in the, the Antarctic cities themselves, to promote it, to build up some sense of community around it. My hope is that two of the engagement uh, research uh, projects, little, we had like these two little projects within the big project which is the creation of an online serious game and the Antarctic Youth Coalition is my hope as this tool will be a kind of a legacy of the project so when the, the funding runs out and the project is finished and classified and becomes part of the history of the research institution these two little projects will carry on the spirit of the project and become projects in themselves for other people to engage with and carry on all well, the spirit of the project and maybe the spirit of Antarctica that is so pervasive and, and important well, to me and, and for others. <laughs>